This is Simarjit Singh back with another video of the Coach on Campus series. Today's video is called The Power of Labels, or perhaps I should have called it The Prison of Labels. We've all been given labels by well-intentioned, well-meaning parents, by friends, by teachers who perhaps were too quick to judge us on our intellectual or mental capabilities, by friends who perhaps labeled us on our looks, on our background or the way we behaved. Perhaps you were that shy kid in class who was labeled due to that particular behavior. Perhaps it had something to do with your background or perhaps it had something to do with how you performed on a given test, you know, after a couple of times. The famous Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard said this very powerful set of words about labels and why we should reject them. He said, once you label me, you negate me. Once you label me, you negate me. Once you label me, you cancel out so much more of my possibilities. You put me in a small box and I, as a human being, am much more beyond that box. But since you've now given me a label, you've canceled out so many other possibilities. And the biggest danger is, as motivational speaker Les Brown beautifully said, the biggest danger of accepting labels is, is when you allow the opinion of others to become your own reality. That is when you become a prisoner of labels. So you must choose to, this is where your self-consciousness comes in. This is your self-belief comes in. This is where your self-awareness comes in, that the world will give you labels because that's what they do, right? It's easy for us to put people into categories and deal with them, you know, accordingly. So it's very convenient for the world to give us labels. It's actually, the world is very, very quick to judge us and to put us in a certain category. But it's down to us. It's based on our self-awareness. It's based on your conversations with yourself to actually be able to accept or reject that label. I love this quote by Les Brown, which said, don't let the opinion of the world become your reality. But if you do, if you do fall into that trap of allowing the opinion of the world to become your reality, that's a very, very dangerous trap because once you start accepting a given label, once you start believing in it yourself, it triggers a process with psychologists called self-fulfilling prophecies. And I explain that in detail in another video. Self-fulfilling prophecies means you tend to predict your own future based on the conditioning of your own mind, based on the labels that you have received. You now tend to predict your own future within those boundaries. Since the world has always told you you're bad at math and you can't do anything in life or you're bad at this subject or you're nothing in, you know, in sports or you're not athletic or you're, you're not this kind of a person, so you can't do that. Once you accept it, now you trigger a process called a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because this is what you've been conditioned to believe in and now since you've accepted it, your reality is going to match your thoughts your reality is going to conform to the limits that you have now set for yourself, which were earlier set by the world, but now you've accepted it. You've become a partner in the process. And I'm urging you to reject this and not to be a part of this process because you are so much more than somebody else's superficial judgment of your real worth. Self-fulfilling prophecy is a dangerous, dangerous trap. It could work for you in a positive way. It could work for you in a negative way. So be very careful of the story that you keep telling. There are certain elements here. The self-fulfilling prophecy leads to your story. Harvard Business Review actually published a whole article and I will be shortly doing a full video on this activity that I designed based on that article, which was called, What's Your Story? What's your story? When you meet someone for the very first time, what do you say about your life or your life's journey? How do you talk about your future? Are you optimistic or are you full of regrets and missed op opportunities? The story you keep sharing with the world is an indicator of your self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're someone who feels you have vision and energy in your life and you're gonna achieve something, that's the story you share with the rest of the world. That's the story you share with people you just meet. And that is an important indicator of a positive self-fulfilling prophecy. However, if you've just met people and your story is full of missed opportunities and regrets, I could have done this, I should have done this, but I can't, or I don't have the ability to do so, or I lack these things, or I have limitations. If your story is full of uh, limiting beliefs, 
that is again an indicator of a negative self-fulfilling prophecy. And guess what? You cannot break the barriers that you yourself had put into place unless you move them. And this is one of the greatest um, um, discoveries I made in my journey of self-discovery of last 11 years is for you to be able to change anything in your life, the changes first begin to happen in your mind. If you're able to mentally or visually change those barriers, you can physically now go beyond them because the first barriers are in the mind. They're not as much out there in reality because our thoughts are actively participating in the creation of that reality. So be very careful and not to accept labels from other people because this is gonna trigger self-fulfilling prophecies. It's going to be become a part of your story. It's going to change your mindset. And this becomes an integral part of your mindset. And I'm a big believer that you may have the best skill set in the world. You may have gone to the best institutes and have the best academic qualifications, the best experience, you know, everything world class. But if you lack the right mindset, you won't be able to capitalize on those things, on the other opportunities, on the resources that you have available because how your mind is operating and mindset, I define it as the predominant way of thinking, your predominant way of looking at the world, your predominant thoughts, your um, opinions about the world and the opportunities about yourself, about your future. That's your mindset. And all of this combined together, once you begin to accept negative labels from the world, all of this combined together is going to condition your mind in a certain way. And now you become a prisoner of your own thoughts. The famous Sufi philosopher Rumi said it beautifully. He said, the saddest sight in the world, the saddest sight in the world is the human soul sitting inside a prison with the key in its hand. So we become prisoners of our own thoughts. Someone famous once said this uh, thought about mindset, about thoughts and prisons. He said, cages aren't made of iron or bricks and mortar. Cages are made of thoughts. And if your biggest cage is your thoughts, is your mindset. Guess what? You have the key in your hand as well, and the key is also through your thoughts. Human beings, by the virtue of changing the way they think, changing the way they perceive about themselves and the world, are able to go beyond any boundaries that they might have set. Your escape route from a life with which you are unhappy, lies through thoughts because the prisons that are holding you back, the gates that are holding you back have been built by your thoughts as well, have been built by conditioning over the years, have been built by the labels that you receive from teachers, from society, from parents, from your peers, or perhaps from your own negative experiences, right? You had, we tend to journalize. You have one negative experience and, and you blow it out of proportion and you tend to journalize it. You, you did badly at a test once and you tend to make the assumption this is how I'm always going to do at this subject. Not allowing yourself the opportunity to change and grow. And that's the, the beauty of human consciousness. We have the ability, we, we, are not, we are not organisms who can who just live in one place all the time. We have the ability to, through the power of our thoughts, to change and go beyond any limitations that might be existing.